Welcome to another episode of Tiffin Box TV. I speak with photography industry leaders who make it a habit of inspiring others, bridging craft and commerce to help you create a sustainable and creative business. Today's guest is a teacher and author, Fuji X ambassador. His name is Damien Lovegrove and he's in England and he's joining us from on Skype, obviously, but would love to in, just a warm welcome to Damien because number one, I've been a huge fan of his and and um, to just get him on the show is just a huge huge honor thank you so much for joining us today that's a pleasure thank you thank you very much for having me here and uh yeah let's get on and uh let's let's, let's give your listeners and uh, your viewers some um, something to take home so Fantastic. i'm going to start uh, at the very beginning because i'm curious um there's not a whole lot about how you got started in this business i know a little bit about you know, how you, you've you done weddings for a long time, and now you've shifted to being more of a portrait photographer. Uh, I don't know if that's still the case. If you still shoot weddings, remind me uh, or correct me. But, uh, you know, it's always interesting to see a progression of a photographer from uh, A to B to Z, you know? So tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, you, you've, got, you've got some of the elements there, um, but of course, it all starts a long way back. I, I'm, I'm getting old now, an old man. But um, back in 1984, yeah. um, I joined the BBC as a cameraman, as a, an assistant trainee cameraman. Oh, um, and then I became, a, finished my training after three years, and I became a cameraman, um, and then, uh, I did a further three years of training, but on the job, of course, making television shows, sort of shows that um, are mainstream TV over here in the UK. Um, and uh, then I did, after those extra three years, so after six years in total, I became a um, a lighting cameraman. Okay, so, um, and then after that, those uh, that lighting training and stuff, I then went on to do another further three years to become a lighting director. Yeah. Uh, then after those three years and nine years in total, um, I got made redundant and I got a job in news and I was working as a news cameraman um, and editor. Uh, I thought, ah, do you know what? There's no art in news. And so I gave that up and I decided to become a stills photographer because I'd been submitting to photo libraries all my life and, you know, quite a good income from royalties, to be fair. So um, I thought, well, I'll just, let's go this, do this full time. Um, so I've been image making, you know, for a long time. So that took me right up to 1998. And uh, then uh, I had a couple of years photographing uh, commercially for Adidas, um, big companies, uh, Parker Pens, you know, cor corporate companies, product photography, mm -hmm. uh, advertising photography, so the products being used, you know, anything yep. that involved a person. Because um, I could got the energy out of people, and so uh, they, the advertising agencies want me, wanted me for that sort of thing. Um, so I did a, a few shots uh, and things for there, but I couldn't make a living. You know, I couldn't get couldn't get enough money in. You know, all, loads of people all the time owed me money, and I was having to chase it and send statements, invoices, uh, etc. And that was the hardest part. And I didn't want that, so I decided there and then to make sure that I got paid for everything that I do up front. Um, and I set up a strategy with my wife, Julie, to shoot weddings. And we came up with a really, really good plan for a product that was different to everybody else's. And we launched our wedding business about year 2000. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Martha Stewart in the States, uh, when she got to see one of a, a Love Grove wedding album, she went, oh, wow, this is amazing. And of course, then it all took off because uh, we had brides from Philadelphia getting married in um, Italy, a castle in Tuscany, and we had the makeup artist from New York, the dress designer from Paris, and the photographer yep. from Bristol, UK. So, you know, we made <laughs> our mark. We had 10 years of top wedding photography. Um, and then I left wedding photography at the point where um, it was at a peak. Um, and most of the times I've moved on in, in my career have been at peaks. Um, and uh, I, I, um, it was a time for me that on a personal level, we needed to st stop shooting weddings. I needed to have a weekend. I needed to see my daughter at weekends who was growing up rapidly and we really seemed to be away. We had no summer holidays for 10 years, you know, mm. so I can hear the violins going now. But the point is that actually, yeah. you know, you've got to make a living. At some point we did 10 years head down, didn't lift our heads and just got on with serving clients, earning right. money, right. paying off the mortgage, just getting ourselves into a good position. Right. Um, then, of course, those wedding clients, 400 of them, um, became good portrait clients. Because when you've got a customer who's 
invested heavily in a really beautiful photograph album. They understand the value of photography. And of course they have children and families and that then fueled the next generation really of my work. So, and, and it was soon after I left weddings that I started to realize people wanted to tap into that knowledge and experience. And so, um, I started doing workshops and videos and things like that. And of course that sort of took off in a way, in a big way. Um, and now I, I don't do workshops in the UK anymore. I do workshops in places that I want to go and visit. Ah. So I'm coming over to the USA. I'll be in uh, New York again in uh, in February. Um, That's right. Utah, uh, this year I've been in Utah, Arizona. I've been in nine states in total, uh, but mainly the high deserts um, from Utah, Arizona, Nevada, uh, up, up into Yellowstone, all that way up there. Fantastic. Did a road trip. So. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, I'll be doing that again this year, um, but I've, I've been starting to do a lot more writing, writing for magazines. Uh, I wrote a book. Um, I've written a couple of books which I've just published, mm-hmm. which I, I know you've read at least one of them. So uh, yep. that, that's uh, yeah. and and so now imagery and image making has been very much part of my life since, as I say, 1984. And now after the workshops, I suppose, I'm still shooting for customers, uh, for clients, portraits, um, but I'm evolving into travel and landscape photography. That's awesome. where my heart is. Oh, interesting. Personal okay. projects. Okay. So. Well, let's go, let's rewind just a smidge, though. Yeah. Um, it's interesting to, to hear about your background starting in, um, in, in a sort of a lighting capacity, and this is what you're known for now almost, right? I mean, you're known for your lighting. Yeah, I mean, it took nine years to get to the point where I was formally trained in lighting. I mean, I'm, within the first three months of the BBC, you do a three, you know, the, you do a three month residential course, mm. probably of which one week of that is lighting. So right. you you learn to light an interview, you learn to color temperature, the quality of light, etc., right. all that sort of stuff. Um, but it wasn't until I trained as a um, lighting cameraman for a one month course, it's the basic lighting course at the BBC, where I learned, started to learn about the artistic interpretation of light and, uh, and, and adding mood and drama and keeping lights out of shot and yet making everything look visually attractive. Right. Um, and so uh, that, that one month course, I learned how to light a, a singer and a pianist at a piano, you know, uh, how to light a, 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 a rock band, how to um, light a, a church for a carol concert or something. All these different things you know, from small and en- elements up into big elements. Of course, you know, it, it interviews and other dra- documentary drama stuff came yeah. into that. Well, one uh, of the things one of the things you you say in your book, uh, yeah. portraits, uh, which really resonates with me, and I'm going to read it. It says, "You say, uh, if the light is good, use it. If not, modify it or make your own. Never yes, settle for bad light." Um, yeah. this, this is this is such a, a, a sort of a teaching moment. A lot of photographers will just go, "Well, this is what I got. This is what I got to use," and yeah. sort of almost give up. What do you recommend? What do you tell? A, photographers who are just starting to learn to see light, learn to appreciate light, how, what is it that they need to do to make that jump to the next level in understanding that, yes, it's going to take a little bit more work, but you're going to have better results? Yeah, I think you've got to really weigh things up. Sometimes when time is tight, mm-hmm. I will find the light and create pictures. So okay. you have to have a repertoire of pictures and, and systems you know that work. So for instance, in the room you're in or in the room that I'm in now, yes. I could uh, you know, open the curtains, find a pool of light right. and make a picture. Sure. And so that comes with experience. Um, but sometimes, of course, you need to make a picture. So for instance, here, I wanted to be in front of, uh, in, in this room here, because this is the room in the office that, that I, I've got available to me, but I wanted this picture behind me, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and I wanted to be lit, the, the, the light levels going up and down outside, so I closed the curtains. Mm. So now, you know, there's a little bit of light coming from there, but I've put a light on here. Right. So there's a light on me, right. and then that background is lit as well. Yeah. So if I pan this around here, you'll see that there's a light, possibly you might see, I don't know where it is now, it's over there. There somewhere yeah, okay. but it's at 90 degrees to the camera but it's lighting that picture behind me gotcha. and so i get a visually acceptable balance right. with the camera that's available which is that tiny little one at the top of a macbook pro yeah. and so it doesn't matter what camera or lens or system you're working with it's the light that makes the picture oh, the other thing that strikes me about your work uh and i've as i said in the introduction i've watched your work for such a long time is that so much of it is full of intent there's no like let's just wing it. It's just always, 
let's bring this light here as you said we're going to open the curtains here we're going to we're going to try and stream this light only to the background there's so yeah. much thought involved in what you do where does that sort of discipline come from I think it comes from serving well first of all in television um you when you're working for a company like the BBC uh, there's a standard that's expected. So when okay. you go to watch a, t a TV show, it doesn't matter what the TV show is. It could be 24, um, whatever your, your uh, CSI, Miami, or whatever. Every frame of every scene is lit. Okay, it's all lit to the same intensity. The ca camera lens is at the same aperture. Mm -hmm. All the tracking shots move left to right when everything's going well for them. It all moves right to left when it's not going well. You know, there's a, a rhythm and okay. a core right, right. to production for television, whether it be drama or what have you. And the higher the grade of the production, the more countries you can sell that production to. So the more money ABC or whoever get, wants gets in. And once you've got that money, that pool of money, you realize actually you need to employ the best people you need to empower them with the lighting and the equipment needed now of course i don't have the resources to do something like a big drama like that but i do have the time and the setup even on skype with a little macbook pro lens to actually make a difference and so i think as a as an image maker if you can make a difference then uh, and it's worth it you have to put that equation together here we're going to be chatting for 10 minutes or so yeah. and, and it's worth putting some light up because we want to get a nice yeah. uh, a nice image we want to give your customers uh, uh, your readers your viewers something more pleasurable to look at after all they've got to look at me so hey um, and this is the when I'm shooting weddings or whatever I'm thinking let's just put a light in here you know so the bride and groom could be milling downstairs chatting to all their guests I don't need to disturb them I can go up to their room um, set up a light and there might be a nice old four poster bed or something I just put a nice light in and then we can bring them the bride and groom out of their uh, re reception up into their room shoot a few frames in that light in the bedroom pan the light around shoot a frame by the bathroom door you know make three or four really nice beautifully lit pictures from that setup let them rejoin the party move the light to the library you know, um, and so the pictures, when you look back at the pictures, there's this Hollywood glamour quality to them. And that's why people would come halfway around the world to get some Lovegrove pictures. Um, and that was the, the key to developing the brand is to make sure the imagery is at a level that your competitors probably couldn't be bothered to go to. And that at the time, that was the case. But now I'm hoping that people are just feeling a lot more switched on with light. Excellent. Wow. I, I love I love the teaching that you do, even in a casual conversation like this. I love it. Um, you've let's move on to the to the books that you've just published, because I think, okay. uh, yeah, look, you know, you. they are for me, at least. Uh, and I've got to be fully uh, transparent to my audience here. I'm moving from a Nikon system to a Fuji system. And I, I've been looking for the last four or five months looking for a resource that would easily explain to me. Uh, what is what what I'm going to be compromising what I'm going to be adding to my skill set what am I in terms of uh, technology what am I going to be gaining and really there's very very few resources out there and then I saw your post on Facebook and I was like holy crap this is it <laughs> so um, you have two books I'm going to I'm going to just say it the the book that I'm really referring to right now is is a sort of a guidebook for folks who are interested in Fuji systems, a Fuji X, exactly. you're a Fuji X ambassador. There you go. Uh, it, really is there. it is, it is phenomenal folks. It is full of incredible, incredible information about the current lens system, uh, the current cameras that Fuji offers. He goes into great detail about each one. I mean, it's impossible to even really imagine how, how much time you've spent you know, with each yeah. camera body. It is I a mean, labor of love. You know? okay. um, and when you go in, as you say, I mean, I've covered really on this in this guide, it's mm. the, 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 the Fuji X guide for portrait photographers. I've covered all the cameras that uh, that are in the Fuji range, um, uh, uh, currently in the range. 
um, in, and in a way, not a technical specification way. You know, that for me, that's not th that important, but in a way that really deals with the um, the type of images you can shoot with it, the advantages of one particular camera over the other. So right. if you don't know whether you need an X-T1 or an X-T2 or an X-T10 or an X-Pro2 or an X, whatever, mm -hmm. it's all here. You know, uh, it breaks it down into the absolute nuts and bolts. Um, after, of course, after all the, um, uh, the cameras come, the lenses, of course, and the lenses are the heart of the system. And that's what a lot of people in the who are Fuji users they love uh, to collect lenses, you know. And um, but of course, there's ten lenses in the range between 50 millimeter and 60 millimeter. So uh, you know, in, in no time at all, you know, five years, of Fuji have yeah. developed such a range of lenses, 20 of them in total. And wait, I go through them all, and, and of course, we could discuss lens sets. So you, as you can probably see here, if you've got uh, two lenses and you want to know which will complement those two, then I, I, I talk about others and we bring them into complete sets, whether you're a prime shooter or whether you are a uh, zoom shooter. Yeah, this and is of brilliant, course, um, I've got examples of photographs yeah. taken with each lens. This is brilliant. Their strengths and weaknesses. So, Absolutely. Because um, one of the things I'm doing as I am putting my, my want list, my wish list for Fuji lenses is wondering which lens will go with which lens or which lens will you know, not overlap on the other lenses, you know, that kind of thing. And of this guide really walks me through that exact thing. So I was like, thank you, Damien. This is awesome. Thank so thank you very much. I've kept the price point of the guide low yeah. um, because I wanted to give people that option. And we're going to, be a trans, we're going to translate that into German, Italian, oh, wow. Spanish and French as well. So that process will be happening in the new year. Okay. Um, but the piece de resistance, my body of work um, over the last few years uh, has been producing a book called Portraits. Now, there's two covers for this book. There's a black and white cover here, which you probably can't see very well. Um, and there's also a, a color cover. But it's a mammoth body of work, isn't it? So, yes, uh, it is. The, the, the great thing about an ebook, and I know a lot of people who I was working with, you know, working for in a way I had in my mind, they were saying, oh, we want to have a real printed copy but the great thing about the ebook is you can zoom right in you can see at pixel level what's going on at the picture because this is high res i mean this Fantastic. is a gigabyte of downloads so. Fantastic, yes. uh, and, and it of took course me a while to download the books yes absolutely yep um one of the things you say in the book in that book in the portraits book yep. uh, is is really uh drove home the idea that when you're making portraits you're really it begins with a connection it begins with that connection with your subject, Absolutely. whoever that is. Yeah. Um, and you say, there was a time in my life before my mid-30s when I found it hard to look someone in the eye and s maintain a connection for more than a few moments. I have no idea what changed or how it happened, but eventually when shooting weddings and portraits of children, I developed the skill and the confidence to really work a connection. Get it wrong and it can be mistaken for flirting. Get it right and it just about any emotion is at your command from sadness through anger to laughter, or a thoughtful but strong expression like this. And you give an example of, of, a, of a woman, obviously, in a very intimate setting, obviously, in this book. <laughs> this book. So uh, yeah. what, what is it that you feel, uh, I know the switch came at some point for you, but why is, is connection such an important factor in what you do? Uh, I, there's many, many ways to use a camera to take a portrait, of course. Uh, and a lot of the the great photographers of the past have been photographers that have done a lot more candid or street photography work, documenting what they see in front of them. Um, and in a way, having no connection is the most pure form of their work. Right. Uh, but for myself, I need to control what's in front of me, okay? I'm a control freak, ultimately. Um, but I want to bring out, like a film director, a movie director directing, uh, uh, you know, whatever the film, doesn't matter about the film, but what matters is that the director has control of sure. the performance of the artists, can get sadness, can get strength, can get a feeling of confidence um, or a feeling of weakness. And just by changing their, my own the way I'm directing, mm. I'm changing the way the words I'm using, the emotions, the expressions, the moment that I'm creating when we're shooting, uh, and it's bringing something out of the person. So I'm relying on the person in front of me to be an actor to some extent, or just to be natural, to be themselves, but I'm allowing them that opportunity to be themselves. So for weddings, we know, having shot 400 brides and grooms, they're, you know, they're not actors, they're not models, they're regular people, but the pictures that we produce 
really do capture that love between perhaps the bride and her father. It's not just a moment that's been stolen or caught. It's a moment that's been created through friendship and openness. Uh, and it's a real moment, you know, I, I, there's a lot of laughter in my life. There's a lot of laughter in my work. Um, and there's a very wonderful feeling when I'm shooting with a, with a model or, or someone, or a client. Uh, we have a great time and that energy, that positive energy comes into the pictures. Right. It's not all smiles and laughter, but that energy is the foundation that I build upon, which I can then bring some sadness or what have you. But we always bounce back after a, a, a calm or frosty or hard scene always bounce back to a, a lighter moment yes. that's the basis that I'll, i'd like to work on fantastic fantastic um is there anything you'd like to uh tell my audience about the books and how uh, well let me let me rephrase that what is your intent for the books that you've just published what do you hope photographers will gain out of it yeah i, I think the, the book, the main main book is Portraits, mm. and it's in that book I've put five years of my work, mm. all the, the photographs from the last five years. It's not just a sort of a best of for the last five years and popped into a book. It's mm. the, the pictures illustrate the narrative, the story that I'm trying to put across, the way that I use light, uh, how I create emotion, uh, how I keep the energy, keep everything fun, how I capture movement um, the techniques and the systems that i use right. so it's a very technical book as well as being an inspirational book sure. um, so the pictures have often been chosen to illustrate a, a point um, there's about sixty thousand words in the book and so wow. yeah, it's taken me two years to write i mean we're not talking about a small ebook here we're talking yes. about a big volume if it was printed yes. Uh, yes. and it will get printed at some point um, but it's uh, it's over 300 photographs there and all high resolution and every single picture has got its exit data mm. it's got the story behind the picture right. and how it was lit um, I don't leave anything to, to, to chance really um, uh, I, I've got as much pretty much everything I know about photography into that book I, I've not held back on anything uh, I knew that there was one chance in life to produce this body of work and so I've put everything into it and uh, I hope your your uh, viewers will get the opportunity to download it I, I, I think we're going to give you a link so yes. that, we can get, that they can have a discount um, yes. and uh, please you know download it read it review it write about it um, and, uh, you know, just spread the word because uh, it's, a, it's a lovely body of work. And I just yeah. hope you appreciate the yes. effort. That's I do. In. I do. I really do. It's a it's a tome. I mean, you're right. It is it is filled with incredible information. Um, and if you have the Fuji cameras, obviously, it will make a, a lot more sense for you as well. You go out to play with exactly the same tools that Damien has. Uh, and and just try it out. I mean, not, there's nothing. Nothing's gonna happen to you. You gotta go out and play. And I think this is my mantra. Really, just get out and check it out and see what happens. Uh, and, and he walks you through exactly the tools he's used, the direction of light he's brought in, uh, everything. Just really everything, except of course uh, the words he may have used to cajole or. Uh, bring out the, the Joe, emotion, the Joe. emotion that uh, that we've just talked yeah. about, the connection that has to obviously come from you. Um, I will have links, uh, and I know you're coming to the U.S. I'll have uh, information about that as well. Um, I, I believe you're going to be here for the Fuji uh, Love uh, webinar. Or, what is it called? A convention, a convention, I think. Convention, yes. Uh, yes. It's going to be a convention in New York. Uh, it's over two or three days. It's phenomenal. Lots of amazing Fuji X photographers are going to be there, including Damien. Uh, Damien, thank you so much for this. I really am so thrilled to have been able to connect with you, talk to you about your, your work, uh, which I've really held in such high regard in such a long time. Uh, so it's thank amazing to, to be able to do this. We must have a beer. Are you going to come to New York? I am going to try my very best. Uh, I know we've, I've, I've talked about it. I've put it in my calendar. Okay. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Otherwise, I'll come and see you. You're welcome anytime. I live in a small town called Avon. Uh, you're welcome anytime. We've got lots of, yeah. lots of pubs here. Yeah, I've got a river just up the road called Avon. So yes. that's good. I figured, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.